How are we doing, students? Today, we're going to start a new unit. Our unit today is going to be energy. Um, what about energy? Energy is everywhere. Energy is how we measure motion, really. Um, and, and this energy in motion can either be stored, like in the bank, or spent in the actual act of moving somewhere in speed. So the way that we can think of money is currency, or the currency of motion. And there are, ah, and energy is measured in a couple of different ways, one of which is calories. Our body intakes calories, and then we burn them to get motion. As I'm moving, my body is burning calories. And the more I move, the more my body burns calories, right? Lots of energy. So it's the currency of motion. While I was doing all of that motion, my body was burning through all the money in the bank that it had right here from Christmas. Um, the way that we measure energy is a unit called joules, or J. And in order to keep our units correct as we're doing math, I'll have to... Sorry, we were interrupted by the afternoon announcements. Um, uh, we'll, we'll continue on from where we left off. Joules is the way that we measure energy. J is how we uh, abbreviate it. And we can measure it using kilogram meters squared per seconds squared. Just to keep our units correct when we're doing mathematics, we can use kilogram meters squared per second squared. I know that it's a pain. A lot of times we'll just be transferring from one kind of energy to another, and that will be joules. Oh, speaking of, there are a number of different kinds of energy that you can have. The first kind of energy that you can have is simply the energy that is motion. We call that kinna, which means to move, right? Kinematics, like or kinematic equations, those equations for moving, or telekinesis, moving things with your mind. Kine, kinetic. Kinetic energy is that energy in motion itself. So this ball, as it's rolling, actually has energy. And we'll talk about how we can calculate that a little bit later. Secondly, this ball now has what's called potential energy. Um, and potential just means that it actually has the potential to move. So whereas this ball was moving along the ground, this is like when you have cash in your pocket and you're ready to spend it. This is when you've got money in the bank. What do you think about that? This has the ability. At any moment, this could roll off the edge here and motion would start. Right? Taking money out of that bank and putting it straight into your pocket. All the way up to the point where all of this energy you had stored in the bank is now in motion. Right, so as I roll it off, you can see that this potential energy was converted into kinetic energy as it fell. Sorry, interrupted by the announcements once again. All right, moving on. The next kind, so we have gravitational as potential energy here. The next kind of potential energy that we might have is called elastic potential energy. In elastic potential energy, here I have a rubber band, and this rubber band wants to return to its original shape. Right now it's a little bent out of shape, and there's actually energy stored there, because if you think about it, when you stretch a rubber band and you let it go, there's going to be motion, right? And that motion is really energy. Here I've got a little piece of paper, and I'm going to show you that I can convert this stretching of this rubber band into flinging that piece of paper, right? There was actually an awful lot of energy stored in this tiny rubber band. And we'll talk about that a little bit further. The last kind of energy is where energy goes to die. Every time you have motion, you've got molecules running into each other. And that running into each other causes those molecules to bounce around. We think of this movement, this bouncing, as heat. So when I have my hands rubbing together, I'm converting kinetic energy, the energy of my motion, into the energy of heat. And I can't really ever get that energy back out. I mean, we can and we have as scientists, but when we think of heat energy for us, we think of energy lost due to something like friction, where I can roll this ball 
and it will eventually come to a stop because that motion energy, that kinetic energy, is all now in heat. So we've lost it, unfortunately. That brings me to the last thing that I want to talk about for energy, and that's the second law of thermodynamics. which sounds so wonderfully complicated. The second law of thermodynamics simply says that energy in a closed system can never be lost or gained. That means that if I had 100 joules of energy here, it's all in potential, but as it fell, right before it hit the ground, I have 100 joules of energy. Now it's just kinetic. Still the same amount of energy, it just transfers from one type to another. So to represent something like this, here's my ball. I might show, here's my ball after one second, and here's my ball the instant before it hits the ground. I might show the energy in these three systems using a pie chart. Pie charts are really nice because you're always going to have 100%. And you can just show that that energy is transferred from one kind to another. So if this were A, and this were B, and this were C, I might represent the energy inside. All of the energy when it is at the top is in gravity. So I might say energy gravitational for A. Oh, that's an F. For A. For B, it is halfway down. So it's still up off the ground, so it has some gravitational energy still, but it's moving. So we also have some kinetic. I would say we have 50-50. In this last one, in C, all, it, it's the instant before it hits the ground, so it has no height. That means that all of our energy is in kinetic. And we can represent the amount of energy stored in the system like this. And we'll practice this next class.